stars above, so below. The bearer of this missive is an envoy of Kapsha, bestowed with authority by proclamation of the Inshar and Council of Kapta in abiding service to the late king, Nemosine II. To King Glorian of Liabra, we of Kapta entreat you in our most desperate hour. We have thought ourselves safe. For so long we have been hidden, our vast ocean concealing us and our ancient wards protecting us. Our existence went unnoticed by the living, by the dead, even by many of our distant kin. The souls we took were the remnants of the drowned and the damned, whose bloated corpses abounded in the sea above us. We took only as many as we needed, and were careful to leave none who could speak of our coming. This had been our way since the beginning. Caution, secrecy, survival. Our eyes were turned towards the surface, watching always for the agents of the ancient necromancer, lest he came for us, or for the souls we had taken from the dead. We did not think to look for those that came from below. A crack resounded in the depths, a thunderous boom whose tremors blasted across the seabed, shattering many structures belonging to the disparate outposts of our enclave. Then came the sound of our ocean being swallowed whole by a great and gaping moor, the sea stormed past us, wild and ferocious, buffeting the barriers at the edge of our city, and dragging those idleth in the open water to their doom. Mooring stakes were uprooted as the largest bond beasts were sent crashing into the enclave's perimeter, and the wards that enclosed our enclave began to collapse under the merciless force of the current. We saw all of this, and we wept and we were filled with rage. We called out to our ancestral guardians, and our tide-casters poured our prayers into the Corellium at the heart of our city. Though it pained us, we awakened those ancient warriors who had already given their lives for our enclave, and we summoned them to the fight once more for the survival of our people. As one, they awoke from their slumber, taking the form of an Eidolon of Mahlan. In the name of Mahlan, the Eidolon ordered the draining waters to submit to its authority. It was not alone as it made its demands, for our tidecasters also levelled their magic against the rushing waters, straining against the weight of the ocean that was bearing down upon us. Through their combined power, they calmed the sea around us and restored the bubble of tranquillity that surrounded our city, around which the tempest continued to flow. In that respite our people gathered their forces. Our Namarati was set to the task of repairing the most damaged structures. Our Achleans made plans to find and seal the fissure into which the sea was draining, and our soul wardens took tallies of those who remained, and those who had been taken from us forever. Then the dead came flooding in. They had always been above us, those unquiet souls who had drowned themselves in despair, their watery graves separated from us by a vast and featureless expanse. As the ocean dropped, so too did the masses of bodies that clogged its waters, and while our bolstered wards kept the rushing seas from ripping our city apart, they did not hold back the multitudinous dead that were caught up in the swirl. Thousands of corpses were swept through the barrier at the city's edge, their mangled forms piling up to form morbid dunes. Then their tattered limbs begin to writhe, and their decaying jaws begin to gnash. Those at the front of the gruesome heaps staggered to their feet, began shambling towards us. What phalanxes remained rushed up to intercept the undead. They hacked hundreds to pieces, but even more continued to rise, until a broad wave of waterlogged bodies was advancing upon our kin. We watched our brave soldiers being torn to shreds by dead hands. Then we saw the Eidolon erupt with fury. 
how a hallowed guardian tore into the undead swarm, cleaving their age-rotted bone and sodden flesh with a spear. With tempestuous rage, it sent waves of force down into their shambling ranks, crushing skulls, popping copulent organs. Soon, fetid blood and tattered limbs were strewn across the perimeter, yet more undead continued to come. The Eidolans surged forward through the wards that were now barely holding back the ocean. Hundreds of the dead were pulled out in its wake, but thousands more were still within the perimeter, and the oceanic world began to wash ever more bodies down into the city. The corpses flowed in an endless stream, and though the Eidolon slashed and blasted and dismembered those it could, there would be more than even it could possibly hope to vanquish. In the city, we felt a sense of sorrow coming back over us, a pervasive and unnatural feeling of hopelessness. We knew its source, for it is learnt by all who have ventured surface wood in search of souls. It was the despair of the mournful dead that had bled into the waters over thousands of years. It marked the domain of Nagash, whom which we had always remained hidden. But, as those dreadful waters swept back over us, we heard a voice that resounded through our enclave. I see you, thieves, and I will take back what you have stolen from me. We had thought ourselves safe, but we were wrong. Kapta cannot remain isolated with the coming of the dead, and for our people will not survive if they stand alone. For their lives... And for the sake of all who dwell in the deep places, we send you this missive, and in the name of kinship, we ask but a single question. Will you stand with us?